In this video, I'm sharing 50 frugal living tips. Now, some of these tips are gonna save you big money right away. Some of them is not gonna save you too much money, but those little, little frugal tips, little frugal hacks along the way, they had a big, just like in the reverse, those little $5 purchases, $15 lunches, at the end of the month, they can add up big. So dig in, this video may be a little bit long, but trust me, it is gonna be packed with 50 frugal living tips. Some of them you may already be doing and some of them may be new to you. Sit down, grab a cup of coffee and leave your tip down below in the comment section as well. I love learning from you. So jumping right in, the first seven tips are actually going to be about laundry and ways to save money doing your laundry. Who would have thought? Number one is to shake out your clothes as you're transferring them from the washer to the dryer. This is going to allow them to de-wrinkle and kind of expand out. When your clothes are in a ball, like your jeans are in a ball or your shorts or your shirt is in a ball, it's harder for the dryer to dry it properly. When you shake it out and it's a loose clothing item, the air is able to circulate and you can actually dry your clothes a lot faster and less wrinkles, which is totally a win. And then hopefully you don't have to iron because I hate ironing. Next is always do a full load of laundry. This is a given, but don't do a load of laundry if it's just two or three items. If that's the case, I just wash in the sink or wash it in the little bit of water in the tub, but always do a full load of laundry versus just a couple of items. Next is to put a towel into the dryer. A clean towel, what this is gonna do is this is actually going to help soak up some of the moisture, soak up the water so that it will cut your drying time, which is huge. And I've seen it cut drying time tremendously along with dryer balls. Dryer balls are another thing that I absolutely love. I don't use dryer sheets anymore. I have the plastic dryer balls and the wool dryer balls. I use them in conjunction now. It is a little loud, they're banging around in there, but what they do is the, the plastic one have a little hole that allows the steam to come out, which will steam your clothes. And then the wool ones will help beat out all the wrinkles and really help to cut drying time. So have a towel and then the dryer balls, that's gonna save you a lot of time when you're drying your clothes. Next is to set a timer. Set a timer for about 10 minutes less than you think that your clothes will need because chances are your clothes don't need a full drying cycle. They only need about 40 to 50 minutes, at least when you're putting in the dryer balls and the towel. It's amazing how much less time it actually takes. So set a timer, maybe after 40 minutes, check your clothes, clean out the lint trap, and then adjust how much more time you need. And then you can kind of figure out, okay, my clothes typically take about 45 minutes. So I'm gonna start setting a timer for 45 minutes. My towels, they take a little bit longer. They take maybe 50 minutes. My sheets only take 35 minutes. Then you can figure out on average, this is how much time this type of item takes to dry and then plan accordingly. You can save a lot of energy by not drying the full hour. If it only takes 35 minutes to dry sheets and you're drying it for an hour, that's so much wasted time, so much wasted electricity that's just not necessary. As soon as your clothes come out of the dryer, fold them right away, hang them right away. The longer that they sit in the dryer, the longer that the, the wrinkles are gonna set in and then you're gonna have to iron them or if you're lazy like me, you just pop them in the dryer cycle a little bit longer, which is wasting energy. So fold them right away, get in that habit, and then it's nice. It's, you got that clean, fresh, hot clothes out of the dryer. It's so nice and refreshing just cozy and I love folding laundry. Next is hang dry what you can. Hang dry maybe the whole load of laundry. Hang them out outside, let the breeze blow dry your clothes and let them just dry naturally. That's also going to help preserve the length of your clothes and how long because they're not getting beat up in the dryer as much, they're not getting faded, all of that. And sometimes what I'll do is I will pull out different pieces of item that need to be hang dry because of the type of material. Like this shirt in particular can't go in the dryer. And then also clothes like t-shirts or sweatpants. It doesn't really matter if they're a little bit wrinkled. I just hang dry them and then that's less items that are in the dryer, which is going to help the whole process dry faster as well and make those items last longer. Next is groceries. Groceries are a huge, huge, huge way to save money. Groceries and food is actually typically the number two item in most people's budgets right behind housing. So grocery is a great way that you can save some money. First tip is to shop your pantry before you go to the store. How many times have you gone to the store with your shopping list and you're like, do I have that item? Do I have, do I have minced garlic? I feel like I still have some. Did we run out of it? Do I have any? 
shop your pantry, shop your fridge, shop your freezer before you go to the store. And that's going to help to really cut back on duplicates and really going to help to cut down your grocery spending each month. And a huge one is only shop once a week, only go to the grocery store one time per week. Don't go to the grocery store every time that you want to cook a new meal or you see a really fun recipe on TikTok or you see a fun recipe on YouTube or whatever it is and be like, Oh, let's make that tonight. Let's go to the store. Let's buy all the ingredients. Don't do that. Push it off to the next week's meal plan. Give yourself some time to get excited about it and put it into the meal plan and then work that into your grocery budget. When you go to the store for those random meals, it is much, much higher. They're gonna impulse purchase and you're gonna add things to your cart that you don't really need, but they're a great deal. They look really good. You're hungry and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna grab them. So only shop one time per week or even try going two times per month or cutting back on the number of grocery trips that you're going. Next is meal planning. Meal planning is huge. Meal planning is such a game changer and it takes that question of, What's for dinner? What are we having tonight? I don't know what to make. It just takes it out of the equation. You're only asking yourself that one time per week for the whole week versus every single night. And I know that when we don't meal plan, my husband and I, I don't know, I don't know. Does that sound good? No, it doesn't sound good. So meal plan, if you're looking for meal plan ideas, I do have a free meal plan for you guys. It's a seven day meal plan. It comes with recipe cards. It comes with grocery lists and printables so that you can do this yourself. It is super compact and super fun. So check out the link down below in the description box and get your free meal plan. Going along with that is meal prepping. Meal prepping is another great way to save money on your groceries. Meal prepping allows you to do all the prep work at once so that the rest of the week you have your lunches prepared. You don't have to worry about going out to lunch or getting tempted by that. It's already there. It's already prepared for you or with your dinners. I know that sometimes after a long day of work, the last thing I want to do is cook. I'm just exhausted. I'm tired. I don't want to cook, but if it's already meal prep for me, okay, I just hop it in the skillet or pop it in the microwave or throw it in the crock pot, whatever it is, but it's already meal prepped. It's already done. And that really helps to cut back on that urge to get takeout or just order pizza. I, I don't feel like cooking. So meal prepping is a huge way. Some people do it for the whole entire week. And then I know other people that do it two times per week and it helps kind of break up the the meal so that you're not having the same thing over and over again and you can get sick of it. So that's a great way to spice it up and meal prepping multiple meals so that you don't get bored. Next is zero food waste. Be very mindful of what foods you are just kind of letting sit in the back of the fridge and go bad and then, oh, I guess we gotta throw it away. What we do is one day per week, we have a leftovers night and I pull everything out of the fridge and it's just kind of like a mod podge of different meals. And we're like, okay, let's take some broccoli from here and some pasta from here and some chicken from here. And let's just throw it into a meal or I'll throw it into a casserole or something like that. But have that time where you pull everything out of the fridge, you clean it all out, or it's a free for all. Hey, I'm not cooking tonight. You figure it out. You eat leftovers. And that way that food gets eaten up and it doesn't go to waste. Next is buying bulk. Buying in bulk is a great way to save money, especially if you're going to be buying large quantities. So you can buy bigger items of peanut butter or meat or rice or whatever it is and get it at a discounted price. If you have a big family or if you eat a lot of that item, but I will say be careful and look for the cost per unit, look for the cost per ounce because marketers have gotten sneaky that sometimes they see these big items and people just assume it's cheaper. But sometimes it's actually the same price or more expensive with the big jar because people just assume that it's going to be cheaper because it's in bulk. So definitely look at the cost per ounce, cost per unit. So many grocery stores now put that right on the label. So you can just look right there and compare, which is awesome. Number 14 is buying generic. Buying generic is a great way to save money. Chances are you're not even going to be able to tell a difference. I sneak generic food into my husband's meals all the time and he is super bougie with his food and only wants name brand but he barely ever notices there's like three things that he actually needs as name brand like frank's hot sauce but other than that i can just buy the generic and he never knows most of those items that are generic are actually manufactured at the same exact places as the name brand. And sometimes they actually have higher standards that the store puts on the product than the actual brand name does. So definitely give generic a shot and chances are you won't even notice. 
Next is to start a garden or start a vegetable garden that you can grow your own produce. Even if you just start with growing your own leafy greens for salads, or did you know that you can regrow green onions and regrow romaine lettuce by just putting it in a glass of water? So give it a shot, try regrowing your own plants and kind of start growing a little bit of a vegetable garden, but that's a great way that you can save money by growing your own foods and it's organic and it's right there and it is from farm to table, super fast and super delicious. Number 16 is to throw all of your veggie scraps into a freezer Ziploc bag, and then you can make your own vegetable stock. And it is, trust me, so much better than buying the ones in the box so delicious and that way those foods aren't going to waste so you can do your like onion peels and answer your carrots and your celery all those random vegetable odds and ends that you would normally throw away just throw it in a ziploc bag and then make your own vegetable stock and it's so delicious and saves so much money and it's natural and it's you don't you know all the ingredients in it it's not all these weird names that you don't know Next is to use apps like Fetch Rewards. Fetch Rewards is an awesome app that you can use and you scan your grocery receipts or your Target receipt or Walmart receipt or whatever receipt that you're doing and you can earn points which lead to gift cards and then you can use those gift cards to buy groceries, to go eating out and treat yourself or shopping at normal stores. I love Fetch Rewards and I use it all the time. I get so many Amazon gift cards from it. So definitely check out Fetch Rewards. If you use code QHKBH, then you get 2000 points, which equals $2 when you scan your first receipt. The link to download the app is in my description box, so definitely check that out, and then use code QHKVH to download Fetch Rewards and get those points so that you can start with a $2 gift card. Number 18 is to use sites and plugins like Rakuten and Honey, where on sites that you're already making purchases, you're already shopping at Target.com or Macy's or whatever it is, and then earning cash back, or they help to find you the best deal. They help to say, hey, this is a good time to buy it. This is not a good time to buy it. And they also search for coupon codes for you. So those sites are awesome. They're a great way to save money or get cash back in a big fat check. And you can also sometimes bonus up and get gift cards. So you can use a Best Buy gift card, redeem it for a Best Buy gift card and get an extra 10% back, which is a really cool way to earn more rewards. Number 19 is to look into off-peak hours with your electric company. This is something that you have to enroll. It doesn't automatically apply, but call up your electric company and say, hey, do you offer off-peak hours? They may call it something different, but just explain what you're talking about. And they can say, hey, yes, we do. We give you a discounted rate if you run your big electronics, like your washer, your dryer, different lights, different things like that during certain times of the day when energy is a little bit cheaper for you and they'll give you a discount. So you can save a lot of money by looking into off-peak hours, which is great, especially if you work from home, then you can just schedule those chores or those tasks during those certain hours that is off-peak. So typically it's like later at night or a certain time, certain window during the day. These next four ways are ways that save money on your car. So number 20 is to know your tire pressure, keep up to date with your tire pressure, because when your tires are not properly inflated or one is super deflated, the other one is super overinflated, it off balances your car and then it's not able to work properly and it can actually lower your, your gas mileage that you're getting. So make sure that your cars are properly inflated according to the manufacturer and that's really gonna help to reduce your gas costs. And with that being said, also watch your acceleration. It is so easy to jackrabbit, as my dad would say. And as soon as the light turns green of speeding off and that is going to rev up the RPMs and that's actually gonna cost you more money in your gas. So watch the acceleration, watch the RPMs, and that's a great way to, to reduce your gas costs in that way you don't have to fill up as often. Number 22 is to keep up with basic car maintenance. This is going to help preserve the life of your car. Getting those regular checkups, getting your tires rotated, it's going to help just to preserve the life of your car and make it run properly, make it run smoothly, and put this money into a sinking fund and know that these costs are going to be coming because you know that you have to rotate your tires. You know that you need to have oil changes. You know that you need to have tune-ups. So so budget these expenses in so that you're prepared for them. Next is to be aware of the warning lights that come up on your dashboard. I know that I have been guilty of this when I was a teenager and in my early 20s that tire pressure light would come on or check engine and I would just ignore it and just not look on that side of the of the dashboard and just just ignore it. Well, those can lead to bigger issues. So as soon as you've seen those lights come up, 
take care of them and really be like, all right, let's, let's take care of this now so that it doesn't turn into a bigger issue and just get it, get it out of the way because I have been guilty of just, just letting it go and then it turns into a bigger issue and it's even more expensive. Number 24 is to bundle all of your errands. If you're running into town and you have errands, make a list of all of your errands so that you don't forget to go to the bank or you don't forget to run to the store for whatever it is. So make a list of all your errands, make sure that you map them out around town so you're not driving all over the place, pack a lunch, you're not tempted to run through the drive through and just make a day out of it rather than going out 15 minutes this day, 15 minutes this day, and just just using extra gas and extra time that you don't wanna wait. So put them all in one day so that you can cut back on gas, cut back on your time. Number 25, wash your own car. This one is a huge money saver if you're someone that wants to have your car washed every week or every other week and keep it in tip top shape. So wash your own car, invest in some nice products that make you enjoy doing it, get outside, get some fresh air, and wash your own car, detail your own car, that saves a lot of money. Those drive through ones, they don't even do a good job and they are they can add up quick. Number 26 is to have a library card. Look into your local library. They have so many free programs and free activities, free audiobooks through programs like Hoopla or they have homework help, they have free passes to museums a lot. So look into your library and look to see what they offer. They have so many different cool things that you can do for free and to entertain your kids. And it's a really, really great resource that a lot of people don't think twice about or they, they just don't even realize that it's available. Next is to invest in a water filter and something that will purify the water so that you don't have to buy bottled water and then invest in some good drinking cups or tumblers so that you can feel good about drinking your water and it gets you excited. And then you're not buying that the bottled water and being wasteful and having it end up in the landfill, all of that. So definitely invest in good water tumblers, different things that you can drink. And then this one, kind of hard to see, but the camera's having a hard time picking it up. But this is my new sticker that is new on my shop. So if you want it, check out my shop, hashtag shameless plug. Number 28 is to invest in a programmable thermostat where you can adjust the temperature, you can set it so that when you leave the house, it goes to a certain temperature up. And then when you come home, it goes to a different temperature and just having that automated so that you don't forget to change the thermostat when you leave the house and then as the AC is running all day long, it's already set and programmed with you. And then it's really nice when you can adjust it from bed and you don't want to get up, different things like that. And then also set your thermostat about two to three degrees colder or warmer, depending on what season it is for you, then you're comfortable. So in the winter time, when you're cold, set the thermostat a couple degrees cooler so that you can just add in some more layers. And then in the summer, set it a couple degrees warmer than you typically would, and your body will automatically regulate to that temperature and your body will adjust. Another thing that we do is that when I am cold, I will just have something hot to drink, some hot cocoa, some coffee, some tea. And then when I'm hot, then I'll have some ice water to help cool my body down. That also helps to get my water intake up. And so that's a great way that you can regulate your body as well by just using hot liquids or having a nice cozy blanket, investing in a heated blanket versus having the heat for the whole house. That's another great way that you can cut that cost as well, especially if you have central air and you're heating the whole entire house, it's just you. Just have a heated blanket or some extra blankets and keep warm that way. Next is to make your own cleaning products. There are so many recipes on Pinterest, on YouTube, where you can DIY your own cleaning products with some vinegar, some essential oil, and it's amazing how cheap you can make them and, and you know the chemicals in them and you can save so much money that way. Next is to use cloth dish towels and cloth napkins. It is amazing how many paper towels the average family goes through, especially things like washing your hands and then drying your hands with paper towels versus just doing it with a dishcloth. That is gonna save so much money and also just the waste of paper. And same with paper plates, using reusable dishes versus the plastic or the paper plates. That's gonna save a lot of money and really help the environment. Next is a carpool whenever possible. Load everyone in so that you can carpool to work or carpool to an event versus 
multiple people paying for gas, multiple people on the road, it's really going to cut back on that. Also tolls if you're going to be traveling to distances that have toll roads. So that is a really great way to cut back on those expenses. Next is to have potluck dinners and potluck game nights versus going out to eat with friends. So if you have a few friends that you typically go to eat with, say, hey, come over to the house. Let's do potluck style. Let's have a taco night where everyone brings a couple toppings and we just hang out here at the house versus going out to dinner. So everyone is going to be paying about five, ten dollars versus going out to a 30 or 40 dollar meal and you can save so much money that way and then you're also just hanging out at home it's cozier it's comfortable and you can really kind of get to know each other better on a more intimate level than out at a restaurant where it's busy it's noisy it's loud and there's just chaos going on. Next is to check out your city Facebook group. So pretty much every city nowadays has their own Facebook group or multiple Facebook groups. So like that page and then you can get a lot of free events. You know what's going on in the area. You know about free concerts or free movie nights in the park or whatever it may be. So get plugged in on the Facebook groups or in the local family nights in ways that you can save a lot of money that way. In addition to that, when you're looking for events, different things to things to do, look on Groupon, look on Living Social. Those are great ways that you can find discounted rates for those events, for things like the zoo or amusement parks, whatever things that you may already be doing. Check Groupon first and see if they have a Groupon for it, get a discounted rate. And then also with Groupon, you can use it in conjunction with Rakuten. So you can double dip, get your Groupon savings, plus get your cash back with Rakuten. That's a great life hack there. Number 37 is to look into paying yearly versus monthly. So many subscription services and even places like car insurance, different things like that, you can save so much money by paying the year in full versus paying monthly. A lot of times it's a 20 to 40% savings if you just save up and pay for the whole entire year versus monthly. Shopping online for groceries is a really great way that you can avoid that impulse purchasing and you can see as you're going the total of your groceries. So places like Walmart grocery pickup or Instacart, you can really see, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is how much I'm spending. Oh, I don't want that. That's going to be too much or I need to cut back and you can really limit that. This is my budget for groceries and this is how much I'm spending and then avoid those impulse purchases when you're actually going in the store. Number 40 is to reuse and upcycle products and upcycle things in your house. So for example, I have a candle that I just recently finished up. So I was like, you know what? This would actually be perfect for my makeup brushes. And so I use it in my bathroom for my makeup brushes versus going out and buying a little caddy for makeup brushes. So using a upcycle of an old jar that I can reuse. And same with other containers that food comes in and glass jars of spaghetti sauce that you can then use for dry goods like nuts or rice, different things like that. So find ways of reusing and upcycling products in your home that you're already purchasing. Number 41 is track all of your expenses. This is huge, huge, huge wake up call for so many people. If you need a budget, I do have a budget template that is down below in the description box into my shop that will help you track your expenses. And it's really eye opening and it's a built in accountability partner holy cow, we're spending so much money in this category. We're overspending here. All those little trips to the gas station, they're adding up really quickly. And tracking your expenses is a really great way just to have that accountability and get control of your money and getting on that written budget so that you can put more money towards savings or more money towards your debt or more money towards your investments and then really hit your goals faster, which is awesome. Number 41 is purchase early for a discount. So many companies, so many different events will give you an early bird discount. So keep your eye out. If you know that something is coming up, look for an early bird discount and say, hey, I'm going to be a one of the first people to buy. And a lot of times you can save a lot of money that way by being one of the first people and getting that early bird discount or the founding members discount as another great one. And also ask for cash discounts. There are so many things that you can do that you can get a cash discount for. When I was having my wedding, I asked all of our vendors, do you give a cash discount? And all of them were like, yeah, we can do that. We can accommodate that because then they don't have to pay credit card fees. So a lot of smaller local businesses, that's a great way to get discounts is by asking for a cash discount to avoid those credit card fees that they would have to pay. Number 44 is to sign up for coupon codes with retailers and look at retailers. And when you see a 20% off, you just need to put in your email address and you can get that discount. Do that. But 
then be aware to unsubscribe because those retail websites, they love to send emails and it can really, really be bad for impulse purchases. If you're someone that sees that sale email and you're like, okay, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. So just be aware that after you make your purchase, go back and unsubscribe it so that you're not tempted to purchase again whenever they have a sale or send you a really enticing email. Number 45 is to shop at discount stores, shop at places like thrift stores, different things like that. You can really save so much money. I personally do all of our shopping at Aldi, which I don't really consider a discount grocery store, but some people do. It is high quality and I absolutely love Aldi. It's owned by the same brothers as Trader Joe's. So if you are good enough to shop at Trader Joe's, then you should be bougie enough to shop at Aldi in my personal opinion. But shopping at those cheaper stores, they really can help you to save so much money and shopping secondhand is another great one where you can save a ton on items that haven't even been worn or haven't ever even used or used once or twice. So definitely don't overlook those. Next is to DIY as much as possible. There is so much information on YouTube and through friends that if you are needing to learn how to fix a leaky toilet or cut your hair from home or try dip nail polish or fix your AC unit or whatever it may be, try DIYing it, try figuring it out or calling a friend and saying, hey, can you help me with this? I know that you're really good at this. I will babysit your kids in exchange. So coming up with different ways that you can DIY something. And then on top of that, finding exchanges, finding ways of saying, hey, would you watch our kids for this date night? And then I'll watch your kids. And then you don't have to pay for babysitters. You're just exchanging or I'll babysit for you if you can fix this for me or whatever it may be. But that's a great way to cut back on those costs. And then you're building that friendship as well. Number 47 is when you're eating out, look for discount, look for discount code look for places where kids eat free or veterans eat free or at a discounted price know the places around know what your family has what your family the the people in your family and then see what discounts would apply to them or maybe it's kids eat free on tuesday so okay our one week that we eat out we're going to go on tuesday because it's going to save us money and the kids eating free so have a list of those places so that you know hey we're out and about we want to eat out this is where we can go for a discounted price Next is to use your credit cards for travel rewards or cashback deals. But of course, use your credit cards responsibly. Do not put anything on a card that you would not be paying off and do not use it just to rack up the points. But if you're gonna be making those purchases anyways, put them on a trusted card where you can get the cashback deals. I love Chase Freedom. That is a really great cashback credit card. I also have a couple more that we use down below in the description, like Delta for miles with American Express, different ones like that. Next is to find out when the best time to buy an item is. So for example, patio furniture. Google, when is the best time to buy patio furniture? It's going to tell you it's between August and October. So when that time comes, you know, okay, we're looking to upgrade our furniture. We bought a new house, we need patio furniture. Let's wait until August to buy it. Or when is the best time to buy winter clothes? And it can even go as far as groceries. When is the best time to buy apples? When are they in season? When is the best time to buy strawberries? Because when they're in season, that's going to be the cheapest price. So learn when the best time to buy a certain item is, like electronics, all of that, so that you know when to get the best deals. If you want to see the flip side of this video and things that we splurge on, yeah, it gets juicy. Check out this video here. I am all about saving money on things that we can so that we can spend extravagantly on things that we really care about. So check out this video where we talk about what we splurge on. And if you want to know how I plan to make $100,000 of passive income this year, check out this video here. Oh, 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 oh.